up guys, my name is Devin Nguyen. Welcome to 11% Tutorials. Today I'll be teaching you guys how you can recreate this 3D floating item object effect. It's just a common effect used throughout a lot of music videos, particularly Cole Bennett and a lot of his videos. It's just a really cool way to add some dynamic and you know just also depth of field to your video. For this effect, we'll just be using After Effects and Element 3D, no other applications or plugins. But if you're someone like me who can totally afford that Element 3D bundle package price, because I totally, totally bought Element 3D. I will link down below to Element 3D link that I totally use to purchase and buy Element 3D with my own, my own money. This will be a little bit more on the further advanced level of visual effects. So if you're new to After Effects, feel free to pause the video at any time you feel necessary. If you guys are new to this channel, please make sure that you like and subscribe. It's free. All this content is free, so it'd really mean a lot if you guys could. Remember to follow us here on Instagram for more future effects and tutorials. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. All right, guys, so now that we are finally in After Effects, I'm actually using After Effects CC 2021 because some reason the version of Element 3D that I totally bought does not work on my new version. So that's that's pretty crazy. But honestly, it's up to your program and how your program works. Everyone's program is pretty much different, especially with this new update that just completely ruined everything. So yeah, just, just test out the uh, download link if it works with you, or if you already have Element 3D, no worries for you, don't worry. But without further ado, let's jump right into these effects. So when you have your clip right here, I'm clipping mine just very you know short, like five second clip, just so it's not too much rendering power. We're gonna first come over here and we are going to track the camera. If you don't see this, you can come over here to your window, click on your workspaces and make sure you're on default so you can see all of these options. Click the tracker and then click on your, your layer and then we're gonna hit track camera. Now, basically what this is doing is this is just giving this footage to After Effects' 3D computer rendering and it's just going to analyze this entire scene in 3D sense and create information in a 3D base so that we can use it. So I'm just gonna speed this up as it takes a few minutes. Perfect, so now that our entire scene is completely rendered out, you're gonna see these like little colorful flowers. I call them the 3D flowers because they're, they're, they're 3D flowers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here first, just increase this track point size. They're, they're the tracking points of the 3D objects, just so we can see them better. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for some flowers that remain consistent throughout the entire video and are not like obstructed by uh, subject or just like, you know, getting cropped out. So I'm kind of looking back here. You got a nice little like Kanye 2024 sign going on right here, I think. <laughs> There's like a group right here. I'm gonna zoom in so we can see it better. There's a group of flowers right here. It looks like this little triangle right here. And now what I'm gonna do is you can either choose one or you can choose three. I'm gonna choose three just for better tracking. Right click it and hit create null in camera. And now basically what that did was it just created uh, information tracking layer that we can apply all our 3D effects to uh, in this layer format over here. So now what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna reset this view to fit. We're gonna right click this area of the layers and we're gonna hit new solid. And this is, we're gonna be our 3D object layer. So we're just gonna call it 3D OBJs. And now what we're gonna do is just hit okay. And it created just a, a black solid pretty much. So now this is where our plugin, our Element 3D plugin comes in. So for those of you who have it, for those of you who bought it, and for those of you who also bought it with zero dollars, you're gonna come over here and search up Element and drag it on to our solid layer right here. Drag it on and you can see it got rid of our solid layer. Now we got this new layer right here, this new set of controls. We're gonna hit scene setup and this opens up this new looking 3D layer. So for those of you who are new to After Effects, this may appear complex, but don't worry, it's actually a really simple 3D render. So I'm gonna be using rocks for this, this effect because it's just a very natural looking environment and looks like rocks would be floating here. So I have a free rock I downloaded off of CG Trader. For those of you who don't know, CG Trader is just a, a website where you can download 3D quality, high quality assets, free and paid for. This is, this is not like a sponsor for it or anything. It was just, this is a good website. I'll link down to below where I got this rock. I'm going to search it up and click on it and import it into our scene. So now we're going to hit use, click on use auto no normals right here. And then we're going to hit OK. And now you can see our rocks in here. I'm going to scale it up just because it's a tad bit small. 
and you can see our rock is, is pretty low poly but honestly it does not really matter just because of the effect that we're using click space and click to drag up and down left and right and then just click to turn the rotation scroll to zoom in and out pretty simple basic controls we're going to come over here down to this drop down on the scene over here and we're going to hit this default right here uh this is the material layer i have a material set for this rock which i'll also link down below make sure you yeah you click on diffuse and unset and then click load texture we're going to come over here i have this texture for this rock downloaded so i'll link down to that below and i'm gonna hit okay so now you see we got like a, a pretty decent looking rock here and you can see it was really low poly and honestly it looks it looks pretty decent now it's if you zoom in but no one's no one's doing that so it works now hit okay and now you can see our rock is in the scene voila and you can see our rocks also kind of acting a little bit crazy and that is because it is placed in the very front foreground of our camera so it's acting like our, it's like right next to our camera so that's why it's portrayed as like a lot of movement what we're going to do to fix this is we can just basically come back here to the scene setup. I'm going to click on this object over here. Make sure you select on the object and then we're going to increase the scale and I'm just going to push this back all the way on the Z axis. Just so we got like a bit farther in, in the background. That kind of fixed it, made things a little bit more natural. But where the real effect comes in here is under the group panels. So what we're gonna do here is now we're gonna add, take this one rock and we're gonna turn it into many rocks. Click down on the drop down on group one and then click particle replicator. Now this particle count obviously refers to the amount of particles that are being replicated. So we're gonna drag this up to about like 15. I am also going to save my project before it uh, explodes my computer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the particle look, hit the drop down on that, and then we're going to hit the drop down on multi object and click this checkbox to enable it. Now we have an entirely new set of, of controls that we can mess around with. So the scatter is basically where a majority of our effect is coming into place. So you can see if we increase this on the X, oops, my bad. That's this place. On the x-axis, we're getting this crazy scatter of all these rocks, and that's just randomly distributing it uh, on the x-axis. Then we're going to do the same thing with y, and it's not really randomly distributing, as you can see. We just kind of created this weird-looking step pattern, and we don't like that. So to fix this, we are basically going to change the noise amount, and that basically just kind of randomizes things and just makes things you know, a lot more natural. And then I, I just want it to be a little bit more up so we can come back over here to this group one enable and just change, you know, the position of it. So we got a more, you know, prominent looking rock setting. And now I'm gonna, I'm just also gonna push it back on the Z axis just so we got some, you know, depth of field. And voila, there we go. We have some, we have some decent looking rocks floating and they're doing absolutely nothing <laughs> but now time to animate them so this one's actually just very simple uh if you are you know familiar with after effects it's basically just keyframing so animation yes animation is just keyframing we're going to come over here to this random uh rotation displacement under the rotation keyframe it at the very beginning actually don't keyframe it at the very beginning turn it to a random value because they are all the same at the very beginning so i'm going to change it to like 172 right now then i'm going to keyframe at the very beginning go all the way to the end of the clip and keyframe it uh again i'm just going to increase this so that they're spinning i'm going to do it like quite a bit just so we can see that 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 fluid movement as they're floating and now you can see we kind of got some cool spinning floating rocks if your tracking kind of messed up it's just a matter of the tracking points that you chose so you can see there's like some little rough spots going on right here that can easily be fixed by just readjusting the flower points but we're gonna you know not go into that because that's just a you know further depth process this honestly works pretty much fine for the effect that we're striving for I'm also going to come over here and I'm just going to increase the particle size just because I want to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. And then I'm just going to move it back up and there we go. We got some, just, you know, mess around with it, play around with it, have fun until it fits yours. So now we got some cool floating rocks and now this is, this is kind of looking like an effect here. So now time to animate this side. So I'm gonna do two layers of these rocks actually. This is gonna be the front layer and I'm gonna have some rocks behind him. 
I'm gonna rotoscope them out later in the tutorial. But in order to achieve this like circling rock spinning thing, I'm going to, uh, this movement, I'm going to come over here to the beginning of this and I'm going to keyframe the X and Y position. I'm going to move this like all the way over here to the, oops, beginning like that. Um, so that they're all the way over to the left and then I'm going to move all the way to the end and I'm gonna have all these rocks move to the right. To the right, to the right. Perfect. And now if you play this, you can see our rocks are moving to the right as our footage continues. Also another key thing, um, I forgot to mention, it, it, it looks very CG, like, like what? So in order to fix this, we can come back over here to our scene setup and you can basically just change the lighting. I have a couple presets that I downloaded uh, from another YouTube video on just, just free HDRI packs. And these are basically just lighting packs that you can use to change the, the lighting of your rocks. So I'm gonna choose like a sample that honestly matches my scene. I think the sunrise one maybe fits it. Let's hit okay. Um, not as much. I'm gonna come back over here, choose another one. Let's see, try this desert one. But you get the gist, you can come over, you can just go back to Element 3D and adjust the lighting uh, as you prefer. I might mess around with this later, but for now we're just gonna move on with this tutorial. So, now that we have our front layer of rocks, you know, just floating around in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our back layer. And to do that, we're just going to duplicate it and hit Command D to duplicate this layer. And now After Effects might, might trip up, but tell it to bear with you. We're going to drag the Z area all the way back further. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna increase this particle size so that we just got a couple more, a couple more rocks going on. We might get like 30 right here. And then I'm just gonna change the uh, the scatter again so that we just have some, you know, random placement uh, spread, I guess you could say. And then I'm gonna change this randomness so that we have more randomness. Um, so now there we go. We got pretty much a you know, different looking dynamic to fix this back layer. We're going to come over here, hit the drop down, hit the effects, hit the elements, hit group one drop down, hit the particle replicator. I'm sorry. This is a lot of drop downs. Then we're going to come over here to this, uh, to this particle replicator position and we're going to switch these keyframes around. So the end one is going to be at the beginning and the uh, beginning one's going to be at the end. And then they're basically going to move in opposite direction of the front rocks. So as the front rocks are going this way, the back rocks are going this way. And it kind of looks like they're circling around your subject. One thing I forgot to mention is that this back layer is in front of our front layer, which shouldn't happen. So you can rename it too, just to uh, keep track. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like trash at renaming. So I'm just gonna call this back. And then we're gonna move this to the back. So now you can see all of our front rocks are in front of the back rocks. And if we play it out, we kind of got a cool looking dynamic going on. Lastly, what we have to do is we have to make sure our subject is rotoscoped out. For those of you who don't know how to rotoscope, we're just gonna go over this real quickly. What we're gonna come over here is we're gonna come to this bottom layer, hit Command D to duplicate it. And then I'm just gonna delete this camera tracker because we don't need it for this one. I'm gonna drag this new layer all the way to the top and just gonna get rid of everything. Double click it and hit your rotor brush and just rotoscope uh, out your subject. For those of you who know how to rotoscope, uh, go, go ham at it. Uh, for those of you who don't, you just select the subject using this uh, paintbrush tool after you double click it and then hold option or alt if you're on PC to get rid of areas that you don't want selected and then just pretty much move forward in the scene and you know select your subject as you go. So I'm gonna speed this up. Perfect, and now once you make it to the end, always remember to freeze the rotoscope. This makes sure that your rotoscope information and everything that you've done just gets locked in and if in case anything happens, you won't lose your rotoscoping. So I'll speed this up as well. Now we're gonna come back to our original composition and you can see, hooray, our subject is rotoscoped out, but he's also in front of the, the other rocks too. So 
the front rocks. So I'm just gonna drag this in between our front layer of rocks and our back layer of rocks. And now you can see all the front rocks are in front of our character. All the back rocks are behind of our subject and it looks like a really cool looking effect. One last touch that I'm just gonna do to you know, uh, add it a little bit more realism is I'm gonna come over to effects and presets. I'm gonna type in Gaussian blur. You can either use Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur legacy, both work. And I'm gonna apply this to our front layer of rocks, depending on which one is more in depth of field. And I'm just gonna increase this to about like 14. Uh, not too much, but just enough so that the rocks that should be close to the camera are you know, out of focus, like the camera is focused on our subject and then the rocks are behind are in focus. And it just adds that sense of realism to the effect. And like I said, you can mess around with the colors of the rock if it's not fitting to your, to your scene. I'll probably do that a little bit more later, but here is the final result. If you guys made it to the end of the tutorial, thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot. Remember, leave a comment down below for any future suggestions or ideas that you have that you'd like to see from us in the future. If you had any questions throughout the tutorial, please make sure to drop them down below. I'm always down there looking to answer you guys' questions or concerns. If you haven't yet subscribed or liked this video, please make sure that you do. And if you subscribe, turn on the notification bell for many future updates and tutorials like this. Remember to follow us on Instagram at 11% Pride for future tutorials and updates. Thanks again so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.